Let's look at counting points in polygons with QGIS. Um, with QGIS 3, this has changed a little bit, and the way I would recommend doing things is a little different from QGIS 2. So if you're working with QGIS 2, you might want to look for another video. This should only work in QGIS 3. So a lot of functions in QGIS 3 are down in this search bar in the bottom left of the screen. And you can get to that. There's a shortcut, Control K. And when you get there, you can start typing and find particular functions within QGIS that are useful. And um, in my case, I want to count the number of, uh, in this case, it's motor vehicle collisions by city council districts in New York City. So I want to count the points in polygons. Um, I know from experience that there is a function called count points in polygons. So I'll start searching for points in and see what comes up. And you'll see here that count points in polygon comes up. And I'll double click on that. And we'll see that QGIS um, brings up a dialog. Uh, it explains it over here on the right. By default, it's picking a polygon layer for us and a points layer for us. If you have multiple point or polygon layers open, you'll definitely want to double check here that it's actually the ones that you expected to see. Um, you might have to change them here. The new field on the polygons that represents the number of points in that polygon for each feature is going to be called num points by default. I'll leave that as it is. That's fine. I'm going to click run it in background. So this is different in QGIS 3. It's going to, um, as it mentions, it runs in the background. I can close this. You can see down here in the bottom, it's still running. And I can still go about my business as I usually would. I can style things. I can do other things. And um, it will keep running here. I can open it back up if I need to and see what the progress is. And you can see that it's going pretty slowly. It's fine, but it's a little slow. I'm going to close that. And you'll see the result is in here. It's this new polygon layer. It doesn't edit my original polygons. It makes a new one. And this new one, if I open the attribute table, it has a new column, num points. This is the number of collisions per polygon. If I sort that column, I can pretty quickly find, uh, for example, the council district with the fewest points. And if I click to sort again, I'll see the most points here. So that's one quick way to see um, what the minimum and maximum values are um, after counting the number of points in polygons. I'm also I'm going to say um, I'll look at one of the features with the fewest points and I'll turn the points back on and make sure that I can see them on top of my polygons. So I'll rearrange the polygons. And this is a large number of points, 600 some. But I want to eyeball it and make sure that, yes, it seems like, it seems like what I did was correct. So I'm just going to look at it and say, OK, it looks like there are a lot of overlapping ones here. So it's probably about 600. I believe it. And I'll deselect all up there. Okay, so I just counted the number of points in polygons. Um, I'm going to remove that layer that we just made. And I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to first export this layer. This layer is a spreadsheet. You can see that by hovering over the name of the layer. You can see it's some, it shows the full path 
to my file, and it ends in .csv. So it's a CSV file. CSV files tend to be slower for this kind of operation. So if I export save features as and use a shape file, I'll just call it motor vehicle collisions.shp, save it. I don't need to change anything else. Hit OK. So it's the same exact file. I'm going to remove the other one so that I don't accidentally use it. Remove layer. And then I'm going to do the same exact thing again. So control K points in. Make sure I'm using the right polygons and points. I'm not changing anything else. Run in background. See how much faster that is? Way faster should be the same exact um, results. And I'll double check that just to be on the safe side. <clears throat> okay, let's go back to that dialog one more time. And you'll see that this area, this count field, that's the output file that it's making. You can see here it says, create temporary layer, that means it didn't actually save the file anywhere. So I have this count layer, but it wasn't saved anywhere. All right. So if I want to hold on to the count, what I will do is export save features as and make sure I actually save it somewhere and I'll say NYCC, which is short for New York City Council, uh, count motor vehicle collisions, something like that, something descriptive. OK. So now this, if I look at the properties, you can see where it exists. It has a file name, so it is actually saved. If I look at the properties for the temporary one, you'll see storage is memory storage, which is great when you're experimenting and when you're just trying to make sure something's working. But once you know it's working, you really do want it to be a file because otherwise you might want to come back to it later, change some things, and not be able to. And then I'll just remove that temporary one. I don't need that anymore. And that is how you count points and polygons with QGIS 3.